but I'm going to bring Lisa to the stage. Lisa is our prayer volunteer. And Lisa Johnson has been a member of our Masterful Living community for many years and um, has prayed many times at Sundays with Spirit. So grateful for her stepping up. And Lisa, when you're ready, you can pray us in. And thank you. Thank you, Angela. Nice to be here with everybody. And um, I invite you to place your hand on your heart as we partner up with the higher Holy Spirit self. We're grateful to come together for this Sunday with spirit. We offer up any blocks to love or resistance we might have to receiving the wisdom in today's service. We bless our wonderful host, Angela Potts Mananda, in supervising the service today. We bless Ted Swartz, our musician, and are grateful for the gift of music he shares with us. We're so grateful also for our beautiful speaker, Kieran J. Gardner, for sharing her inspiration from spirit. We call for blessings for all who attend today or who will listen to the service later. We share all the benefits of this healing service with everyone, knowing that we're one with them. We let it be. We know it's done. And so it is. Amen. 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 Thank you. Beautiful. Oh, the calm is coming. The calm is arriving. And we're grateful. We Now we get to have Ted's beautiful voice. So I'm going to bring you on, Ted. I'm grateful to have you. Um, I uh, Justine was asking me, she's out right now, but she was like, she always asks me, is that the meeting with the music? Who's the music today? And then, Ted, I did um, an impression of your singing in my car. But I tried. <laughs> but she was like oh i know ted so she's missing it but hopefully she'll catch one of your songs if she if she comes home before so i'm grateful to introduce ted ted um is also a active member of our community and here's ted's intro it says on his journey of 70 plus years ted has had an array of life changing events in his life living in a blended family with Mary Ellen, his wife, they have six adult children, 18 grandchildren, and one great. Wow. Let's take a pause. Other life events include the loss of a wife and other close family members, bankruptcy, and cancer. In addition, Ted has experienced amazing blessings as well, such as a very successful business, his songwriting, and the Course in Miracles community he's a part of. Um, Ted finds songwriting to be a light out of the darker events of life and a celebration of his many blessings. So thank you, Ted. i give you the floor. Great introduction. Great to be here. I, I always enjoy coming when I have an opportunity with Karen J, for sure. Angelo. Mm -hmm. There's a need to talk about it Though some have climbed mountains and shouted Love mm, We're gonna talk about love For no matter what we do before this life on earth is through We'll need to face love Men let pride get in their way Caught up in living every day Too busy to stop and think what this life is about 
Making a living, climb to the top Could have life's true fortunes if they'd only stop Take the time to give and take love For no matter what we do Before this life on earth is through We'll need to face love Yes, there's a need to talk about it Some have climbed mountains and shouted Love mm -hmm. Gonna talk about love For no matter what we do Before this life on earth is through we need to face love We need to face love We need to be love oh, You guys are great. Thank you, Ted. That's the song I attempted today in the car. So... <laughs> You're on to me. Beautiful, Ted. Thanks for placing us in our loving heart even deeper. Thank you. <sighs> okay. And the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Grateful to bring Kieran Jay to the online stage here. Grateful to give you an intro. If you haven't had the pleasure of listening to Kieran Jay, she is a course teacher based in the UK. Kieran Jay has a passion for an experiential approach to studying the course and loves to help others find their own relationship with the love that flows through this profound spiritual teaching. Kieran Jay offers workshops, classes, and one-on-one -on -one support and has worked with other teachers such as Nook Sanchez and Corinne, Corinne Zepko. She deeply appreciates the gifts of collaboration, finding such enjoyment and healing as spirit works through them. Kieran Jay met Jennifer in 2019 when they were both speakers at the UK ACIM conference, and this has led to a beautiful friendship. Kieran Jay has led many workshops and classes for the Power of Love Ministry in recent years with an upcoming six-hour class entitled The Gifts and Traps of Forgiveness, which starts September 23rd. So grateful to have you, Kieran Jay. I'll pass it to you. Thank you. Yeah, lovely, Angela. Uh, lovely that we meet again. <laughs> and it's very beautiful to be here. Um, thank you, Ted, for the perfect um, starting of the uh, proceedings today, facing love. This is what I'm going to be talking about as well, but I'm not using those words. Uh, the title of this talk is, or this experience, is The Gifts and Traps of Forgiveness. The gifts of forgiveness are what A Course in Miracles is all about. It is a teaching that lays these gifts at our feet and says, please receive. They are yours. They are all you truly want. They will change your experience for the better in ways you could have never dreamed of. These gifts are the most beautiful that you will ever be offered and ever can receive. Don't hold back. Don't delay. Claim them now. This is what A Course in Miracles is truly all about. What generosity. However, we can be very reluctant claimers of these gifts. We can and often do hold back 
looking for other gifts instead. And we even practice an ego form of forgiveness to try and somehow win these gifts without actually using the means to receive them. And this is what the class next Saturday, September the 23rd, is all about. The gifts and the traps of forgiveness. So here's a taster, a preview. Let's have a quote from the course. No gift of heaven has been more misunderstood than has forgiveness. It has, in fact, become a scourge, a curse, where it was meant to bless, a cruel mockery of grace, a parody upon the holy peace of God. Yet those who have not yet chosen to begin the steps of prayer cannot but use it thus. Forgiveness's kindness is obscure at first because salvation is not understood nor truly sought for. This is powerful, powerful teaching. The quote is giving us the idea that we can and often do misunderstand forgiveness. And if we do, it will hurt us. This might seem very unfair. We might say, but I didn't understand. And now through no fault of my own, I'm going to suffer. Not fair might be our response. But the not understanding is a deliberate choice by the mind not to understand. Because as it says in the quote, salvation is not truly sought for. And if the mind is choosing not to understand forgiveness, it won't see forgiveness's kindness, forgiveness as it is. We're simply too frightened of what we think it will bring and what we think we might lose. So we are resisting the gift of salvation. Choosing to not understand forgiveness is a trap and often leads us to not forgive. Justifying our non-forgiveness by saying the wrongdoing is so awful that it is unforgivable. Or we might say that person doesn't deserve our forgiveness. I'm not letting them off the hook. These are the kind of attitudes we might have, but they are a trap. And then there are traps we can fall into when we do decide to practice forgiveness. One of them, is when we want to receive the gifts of forgiveness in order to make our personal lives better. Me, me, the person, I want the peace. I want the love. This is so understandable when we've been suffering or struggling, but it actually represents a chosen confusion about what forgiveness is, a chosen confusion about what the gifts really are, 
and a chosen desire to keep the problem of separation the very thing we need to forgive and release. Me, I want to be separate. I want to be me and at peace. Me, I want to be a separate individual and loving. This is impossible. It's like saying, I want the sun to be freezing cold or for ice to be boiling hot. No can do. Ultimately, our mind's desire for separation is the only thing we need to forgive and release. And we approach this decision step by step by forgiving the events and relationships in our daily lives. Let's take a look at the gifts of forgiveness, the true meaning of forgiveness, and our reluctance to practice and receive. Let's look further. Would you like to close your eyes? And imagine the following as a description of your state of mind. Peaceful. Happy. Quiet. There's a certainty of purpose. A sense of worth and beauty care, safety, sure protection, a gentleness that never can be hurt, a deep abiding comfort, a rest so perfect it can never be upset joy with which to meet your day. Let's open our eyes again. Is that not a supreme list of gifts? Wouldn't this be a beautiful state of mind? A Course in Miracles is quite clear that if we practice forgiveness as it teaches it, then we will receive all of these. This list will be an accurate description of our experience. May not happen immediately, but that's where we're going with the course, with true forgiveness. So let's look at the true meaning of forgiveness through four quotes. The major difficulty that you find in genuine forgiveness on your part is that you still believe you must forgive the truth and not illusions. Forgiveness is irrelevant to everything except illusions. It is sin's unreality that makes forgiveness 
natural and wholly sane, a deep relief to those who offer it, a quiet blessing where it is received. It does not countenance illusions, but gently lays them at the feet of truth. And there they disappear entirely. Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. What these four quotes about forgiveness tell us is that what we think we need to forgive is not really there. Forgiveness is irrelevant to everything except illusions. And what the teaching is really pointing to is that not only the wrongdoings aren't happening, but the things and people that upset us aren't there at all. Which means we as people aren't really here. And that's usually a terrifying recognition. It can make the practice of true forgiveness indeed seem terrifying. So, we keep the belief that what we're forgiving is real, and then we can pretend that we as separate individuals are still real too. The terror is kept hidden, but of course, it doesn't go away. It's still in our minds because it's terrifying to reject reality. It's terrifying for our minds to pretend they are people. We have. It's terrifying to think we are an individual separate from the truth and the oneness of God. And to start with, it's terrifying to forgive ourselves for choosing to be an individual separate from God, which is what true forgiveness really is. This does not look good. It's terrifying to not forgive, and it's terrifying to practice true forgiveness. This is why we have such trouble with it. This is how it seems to us. Maybe not consciously, but it will be there. Terror, terror, what do I do? However, it's not as bleak as that. The practice of true forgiveness calls on the mighty support of spirit. And although fear is likely to come to the surface in this practice, it will lessen and fade if we continue. Listening to the ego is a never ending choice for terror, sometimes in our awareness and sometimes not, but always there in our mind, casting a shadow on all our human experiences. So let's have a forgiveness practice and see, see what we learn. Would you like to close your eyes again? and bring to mind 
a current situation where you feel upset with another person. What did they do or say that seemed to be the cause of your upset? What is the nature of your upset? Maybe you're angry or sad or feeling rejected or confused. On a scale of one to 10, how justified do you feel in being upset? If you were to excuse their behavior, what reasons could you find? Maybe the person has been under a lot of pressure. Maybe they've had a challenging time recently or even going back to their childhood, which is still having uh, repercussions on how they are now. Could you excuse what they've done or said using this reasoning? And even if you can excuse them using this kind of reasoning, what is it like to consider that this form of forgiveness is a choice for separation and not for peace and healing? What is it like to consider that this form of forgiveness is an ego trap? Let's come back to two of the quotes given earlier. The major difficulty that you find in genuine forgiveness on your part is that you still believe you must forgive the truth and not illusions. Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. In this exercise, we were looking at excusing what was done by worldly reasoning. This is making the error real, saying that what seemed to happen really happened. We were trying to forgive illusions as though they were real. 
This is making the world real and the separation from God real. True forgiveness is recognizing that what seemed to happen and the world itself aren't real. Let's look again at what the other person seemed to do or to say. Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. How willing are we to open up to that way of seeing in this situation and all situations? Well, I hope you've found this taster, this preview, helpful in itself. And if you're interested in learning more and practicing more true forgiveness, receiving the gifts and avoiding the traps, I hope you might consider coming to the class next Saturday. I have found it incredibly helpful myself in preparing for the class, sorting out my ideas of forgiveness. Um, and I hope that uh, it might be helpful for some of you too. Thank you so much for joining me in this. And thank you, Angela. Back to you. Thank you. Wow. Well, we get to stay on this topic for a bit if you'd like to stay with your eyes closed. Just grateful to be in this energy. Sending an energetic thank you to Kieran Jay for presenting this material so clearly. May we recognize how we're feeling in this moment. What gifts have we received by hearing forgiveness presented in this way, in this clear like a clear review, reviewing what we may have already heard. Truly acknowledging that we may be refusing gifts in the way we are responding to situations in our lives. I'm pretty certain that we could all come up with an example when it was time to practice. I have a couple right now. And I feel confident to say that I join with all of you in really relishing in the relief that we can feel and experience when we let these circumstances, these people, these offenders, 
when they when we release them from being real. And the expansiveness, the lightness of being for me, the spaciousness. And what I heard was all that's required is for us to be willing to put spirit in full, to give spirit full, um, full reign, full control, placing spirit in charge of our reactions, our responses. It may be scary to know who would we be without a reaction or a response? How would we respond if it wasn't to be upset or hurt or as Kieran Jay said, if it wasn't for our ego to choose to forgive, to see that there was something real and we are choosing forgiveness, we are choosing to be the bigger person. What if we don't take that road? What if it's an affirmation of what forgiveness really is, is to know that in truth, in true reality, this has not occurred. We are one with the infinite field of love, who we truly are. And not be offended or hurt. So the relief that we have to repair anything or we have to put it right in our mind that we have to do anything. So maybe even taking in a deep breath and a nice long exhale. the willingness to hold on to nothing. And for me, this brought up a remembrance that we are affirming the oneness. It's that they're not really there. They didn't really hurt us. And nothing outside of us could ever hurt us if the oneness is upheld. And so checking in with yourself, how willing are you to really let spirit have all these circumstances? Willing are you to be free now? How willing are you to let spirit guide your response in any a seeming future moment? And if another nice deep breath feels nourishing and supportive. Grateful to just be in this energy. What if this was our new way of being? So again, sending gratitude to Kiran Jay, gratitude to the teachings, gratitude for the truth that sets us free. 
And my brother, Ted, when you feel ready, you can take the stage. Let's see. It is so peaceful, such a rest. Um, caused me to uh, decide on a different song than the one I had considered because of the lines in this song and the song's title is Love's River and it's let love's river carry you and wash all your tears away your fears away let it carry you forgiveness is the way. So that was one reason for the choice. Riverbank, I watch waters go by that can wash away guilt of mine. I'm sure the burden seems so much more. Love is all a river's asking for. No matter how hard I try, no matter how great my stride. Drowning in a sea of grief as love's river sinks to me. Let love's river carry you, wash your tears away. Let love's river carry you, forgiveness is the way. Set my anchor on the shore with my long chain of pride. Fell to my knees, forgiveness washed over me, felt love's spirit come alive. Peace and tranquility replaced the sea of grief. Now I wait in waters of grace as love's river sinks to me. Mm, let love's river carry you, wash your tears away. Let love's river carry you, forgiveness is the way. Love's river carry you, let it wash your tears away. Let love's river carry you, forgiveness is the Thank you, Ted. Justine was your background. Background. Guitarist here. Um, thank you. That was beautiful, Ted. Ooh, okay. Well, this is the part where you can gather yourself and have a conversation. We could try to do that in a breakout. Uh, we are going to have a 15-minute breakout. This is your opportunity to say what has touched you in the service. Um, maybe you'd like to share your, your situation and um, how you're reframing it, how you're holding it differently. What did that um, exercise do for you? How did it shift you? And so we ask that in the breakout, everyone gives each other a turn to speak and you could always um, opt out of sharing. So it's optional. and. 
as I am the host, there's some moving and shaking around going, not only in my background, but on these things. So, okay, I think we're at the point where we can begin the breakout. And the last reminder is um, in this group, we're just, we're holding space for each other. We ask that people uh, refrain from advice giving, more just appreciating what people are willing to share. So I'm going to go ahead and open the rooms and there's been one more shift. Okay, here we go. Hang on, let's give people a chance to get into their rooms. And I'll do that. And let's see. Okay, it takes just a moment. Okay, this is looking good, great. So here we are, Justine has joined the stage. She's very excited to hear that musical number, Ted. Um, so we'll start with you, Lisa, if you're okay with that, if you'd like to share um, what you are, what, what you've been inspired by in our service today. Yeah, did you, you said me, Angela? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, Karen Jay just expressed it very clearly, that reminder that like everything we're seeing and thinking and the world of effects is not real. And so when, um, you know, if I'm holding a grudge in my mind, which I was, about someone, um, that person is, I'm number one, I'm one with him, and two, he's not really there in the way, you know, in this illusory world, sort of sense. She said it much more clearly, but that was a good reminder that, you know, the truth is true and everything else is an illusion, and how it still unfortunately easy for me to fall into um, you know, holding grievances and like kind of like making an exception <laughs> to the rule. Like, yes, forgiveness, but you know. <laughs> so the, the ego can be very sneaky like that is, is what I'm realizing. So thank you. And beautiful music to my Keep us in our right mind. <laughs> so that's all for me. Thank you, Lisa. Kieran Jay, you can always feel free if you want to respond. And if not, we can pass the torch. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Um, you're not the only person, I think, that uh, finds it a struggle sometimes or maybe many times. Uh, this teaching is flying in the face of everything we experience as a person. And the only way through is to keep coming to spirit, keep coming to spirit, and be willing to have a real change of mind, the change in our state of mind. It's not just tinkering with things in our current state of mind. We have to be willing to open, to see things completely differently. What we think has happened has not occurred. This is a blockbuster statement. It just, it just pulls apart our worldly experience, our worldly identity. And yet there are all these wonderful gifts on offer if we do keep going. We do keep opening. And it's the only thing to do because the world will only give us pain. Seemingly illusions of something else sometimes, something quite nice, but then the pain will come back again. So, uh, yeah. I hope something of what I said and what I'll say next Saturday will motivate those listening to say forgiveness is the only way. Even if it's challenging, it's the only way. And then 
we are calling on the mighty help and all will be well. Beautiful, thank you. Ted? Oh, I'll tell you, you are a titan. You, um, <laughs> you, you don't, uh, you know, you don't dance around the truth. And as much as I, I mean, I started a song called Forgiveness is Love. And, um, uh, and I played around with some of the verses and, uh, and I, I wanted to make it something a little brighter, you know, a little, have a little more of a, a, a brighter tempo and, and, and a great message. And I had to put it, I had to put it down because it is, I mean, if I use a sounding board, like if I, I play it for my, I have a songwriters group, you know, uh, and I'll, I'll play things that I'm working on even if it's not finished, you know, just a verse and a chorus or whatever. And um, that topic of this life is an illusion. I mean, I have danced around it. I've weaved it into some of the, you know, some of the lyrics, maybe just to, if you're really listening, you'd go, what? What did he just say? <laughs> and most of my listening audience, even though I do a lot with grief groups uh, and bereavement, um, that that's a tough that's a tough bridge for me to cross, especially when it comes to music. Um, in order to find, you know, a spirit guided sense, even in myself, I have to come to a oneness in that knowing before mm -hmm. the words will come. If that makes sense, because it's like most of the things I write up, you know, like forgiveness is love. I can, you know, I can, I can get into that. Um, but this life is an illusion. Uh, you know, I always want to temper it. It's, it's, it's yeah, this life is an illusion without love. This life is an illusion <laughs> without beauty. This like, you know what I mean? It's like, I can't, <laughs> can't do it. Um, so thank you for standing up there and, and saying what it really does need to be said. Um, when I work on those lyrics, I'm going to make sure I get a copy of them to you so you can say, Ted, <laughs> Ted you went a little soft here, buddy, you know? <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for that. It's, it, it is encouraging for me. It really is because uh, it's one thing to think it. It's one thing to even say it out loud to yourself or even to, you know, bring it into you, into my prayers. Uh, but when you hear others say it, it's like, okay, uh, there's two or more now. There's, there's more than just me. There's, there's, you know, now there is spirit, you know, the spirit's, at work, it's it's moving, it's it's causing these things. So I I, uh, I want to thank you again, and Lisa for the prayers, and Angela. It's always good to see you. Um. Thank you for letting me share. That was that was good. And it's okay if you respond. If you want to give me a little booster talk, I'm I'm ready for it. <laughs> I say keep going, Ted. Just keep going, keep going. It's beautiful to hear you feeling into this and being honest about the the scruples about it. The kind of not sure about this. There's a kind of knowing that it's true, but whoa, how do I really uh, embrace this across the board in all your experiences? Yeah, 
It is, it is a big ask um, in our experience very often. And yet what we're being shown is what our minds know and what they yearn to uh, admit to themselves more than anything else. You know, there's such a mercy in the course in being so um, rigorous in what it's, it's saying. There's no fudging at all. There's, it gives it absolutely straight. And often, you know, it, at, at the level that we can begin to uh, engage with it, and with such understanding of our struggle. Yeah, I, I just love it. And it can only be this divine intelligence that, that walks this path of being absolutely rigorous, absolutely to the point, and yet so gentle with our struggles with it. It doesn't, it doesn't say, oh, that's okay, you carry on struggling. I know it's difficult. Never ever. No, this is the truth. But there's such gentleness in helping us to realize this is the only way to go. And I just love that. Yeah. So just keep tuning into that is what I would suggest. Keep tuning into that infinite wisdom and gentleness of the course. Yes, well, I, I agree with what's said. I love that we get these, this feels like bonus <laughs> moments with you, Kieran Jay. Um, Cause there's that, I feel like you have our attention because what you're saying is so compelling, which to me shows us we're yearning. Like you said, there's a desire to hear this, like, you know, from the mountaintop, it must be like a, a sort of, you know, like to hear it from Jesus, you know, and it, um literally last night i normally don't have the experience but last night um for a for a situation that i had tried forgiving like and he and here we are we are in jennifer's ministry where her work her angle really seems to be okay that's the teaching now what does it look like in your day to day how do we navigate relationship job the, the circumstances that arise um because the sort of holding this integrating it feels like no don't go you left okay go, go. like how to really get it to integrate but last night like I couldn't sleep because a situation I wrote many forgiveness letters about it just um shifted a bit where there's like a plot twist and the and then it resurfaced and I'm like no I was I wanted to be done with that. God, I've been trying, you know, and trying. And you can start to see the, um, it's like when the pathway is uh, expressed as, well, I tried this, I did that, I did, I did this, um, I worked this tool. Um, but you can see where that maybe does something, but it kind of feels like what Jennifer says is you move the deck chairs around on the titanic and then you're like but we're still going down um and yet you know it, it does feel like it's not a useless teaching to have a forgiveness letter process uh only that you can't forget that you're that the true um, finish line is the recognition of the, the rec the the recognition that you're forgiving the separation and you're um you're grounding yourself in what's real um you're not putting people in their place and labeling it like done yes i you know because this 
insanity is um, this situation in my life resurfacing on top of, I, oh no, I already had a forgiveness situation that it was at the forefront. And now I have this like, now we have two. It's like, no, I can't even. And then I watch my mind stuck on one of them. And I'm like, well, why are you stuck on that? And you're not unstuck on the other one. I'm confused. Which one are, so it just feels like, so what you said about, we'll just have more and more pain if we, if we um, refuse to know who we are and how, what, you know, and what is real and, um, and I'll say the last thing I'll say is that I have been taking a course about understanding men and I knew it was tricky because I'm like, okay, but it's <laughs> about recognizing the human instinct versus the human spirit. And it's about having victories of human spirit, but man is it. It just feels like such a tricky, when you talk about traps, it feels like a landmine. Because first of all, if you're trying to understand, okay, kind of a setup for your control or I don't know, manipulate. but this is where I feel like Jennifer's work is how do we, um, how do we bring this down, down a level? I don't know. And apply it consistently um, so that it integrates, but it's a worth, it's a worthwhile journey and we're on it. So thank you for this encouragement. say that the bonus is, is our good energy has, uh, Justine is out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She went from like jamming over here. Yeah. She's out. So I think our friends are joining us in just a few seconds. Yeah. Hey, welcome back. Oh, maybe. Okay, welcome back, everybody. And if there's something that stood out from you from your breakout conversation, please feel free if you'd like to make a declaration in the chat. How are you taking this? How are you working to embody this teaching or? Uh, what came up in your conversation, anything that you would like amplified with it being held by all of us, please feel free to use the chat uh, to support you. And so at this point in the service, we are going to just make a few announcements. We'll let Kieran Jay make her announcement uh, and Ted, and then we'll do a song and a prayer. And so, uh, Kieran Jay, do you, I mean, do you feel sufficient? Do you want to say any more about your offerings or other offerings? I can let you go first. Thank you. Well, I've already talked about uh, next Saturday. Um, it's it's on the website and maybe uh, a link can be put in the, the chat uh, if anybody feels inspired to, to register. I'd also like to mention that not too far in the distance, starting on the 21st of October, I'm doing a three-part, three-class series for the ministry called Facing Fear with A Course in Miracles. So there's another offering coming very soon. So I hope that might be of interest. I'll be back here again. Uh, just before that, to, to have a little preview of that one. And if anybody uh, 
would like to know more about my program, please visit kiranj.com. And there's information there. There's also a contact form. So please feel free to, to reach out if you want any information about uh, the, the events, the joinings, the healings that I get involved in and offer. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Karen Jay. And for the ministry announcements, we um, like to give everybody the opportunity to uh, make a contribution. So if you would like to support Sundays of Spirit services, I can put a link in the chat. If you'd like to make a one-time donation, you can follow the instructions here. We also offer the opportunity to do to uh, receive our daily text messages. And so if you'd like to make a donation, you will also then be receiving daily course texts. So whatever amount you would like to offer to receive those, their link for them is there. And for the ministry upcoming programming, uh, one of the main headliners is Finding Freedom. So Finding Freedom is our spiritual boot camp class. It's a 12-week program. It's seven weeks of content that you get to have for 12 weeks. And in that 12 weeks, uh, you are offered to participate in a small group where you go through the experience together. So there are many community elements to the Finding Freedom program, in addition to Jennifer's teaching content. Lots of chance to uh, join with others and be inspired by each other, be uh, motivated by each other. And I think the last thing I'm going to share is we have another how timely or appropriate forgiveness letter writing workshop coming up. <laughs> So Jennifer's offering these twice a month and it's teaching her forgiveness letter writing process. So you go through the process and you end up with a letter at the end. So for some people, it's super helpful because there's a resistance to beginning. There's the different flavors of resistance of needing to get it perfect or whatever, however it can come through. But this will be, you're there with others, you can get started and get over any, any barriers you're having to, to writing and learn and see if this forgiveness process feels helpful to you. So those are the announcements from us. Uh, the other thing that we've agreed to announce weekly, which I forgot to prepare, but is to remind everyone that we do have spiritual counselors uh, in the ministry who are trained by Jennifer. And we have now at this point, certified counselors and counselors in training. So it, there's a link here to explore the, the counselors. Each person has a bio. You can learn about, about each of the counselors and see if, if who they are speaks to you. And it's just to let you know that if on your journey, if you're like me, you can find there are times it's really helpful to be, have support and to uh, be guided through challenges. And sometimes I use these sessions to celebrate my victories and to affirm, you know, uh, it's illusory, but we're, we are, we can celebrate when we do let something go or, or where we we are choosing oneness. So that's there too. So the counselors in training, you can make a love offering to them. So there's no set fee. It's whatever you feel guided to pay. And they are required to get 111 sessions before they're certified. So they, it's kind of, it can, it can work that it's a win-win situation. So that's my final announcement. Ted, any, I'm going to give you the floor and you can say anything and sing anything you want. Okay. <laughs> well, that's dangerous. Well, I, I do want to mention the uh, 
forgiveness work, I think, is one of the biggest things that that brought me to this ministry. And, and of course, there's a lot. You see a lot of women in, in this ministry that in participation uh, and in doing groups and, and things of that. Uh, but I've got a men's group that uh, we've been meeting twice twice a month. Uh, but I am putting together a fresh one that will be open to men that don't even know of a Course of Miracles. It's not, it's not a matter of jumping into the Course of Miracles. It's a matter of finding men that have had the call. And they'll be coming up in the fall. Uh, and uh, so all you ladies that are a part of it, if you've got a, a gentleman in the wings that might have a little curiosity but doesn't want to jump into the course, uh, that'll be coming up. So you can watch for that. Um, Karen J. Wow, this is great. What a uh, this is great. Thank you so much, Lisa, for the prayers. We are one. I decided to do this song. It's a little bit of up tempo. It's got a nice thing, but uh, the reason we can forgive is because we're not really forgiving anyone. We are freeing ourselves. So I hope you enjoy this one. I am spirit. I am light. I am love. And we are one so who can say for me what is perfect who can say for me what is right who can say for me what is needed My world begins and ends with me. I am the problem, I am the solution. I am the illness and I am the cure. I am the glory and I am the grief. All that I am begins and ends with me. All that I am, all that I am, all that I am begins and ends with me. Then who can say for you? What is wisdom? Who can say for you what is the truth? Who can say for you what is granted? For your world begins and ends with you. Yes, we are the singers, we are the song. We are the right, we are the wrong. We are the victims and we are to blame. Yes, all that we are, we are the same. All that we are, all that we are, 
all that we are, we are the same. Yes, we are the future and we are the past. We are the first and we are the last. We are the glory, we are the grief Yes, and all that we are will come to be I am spirit I am I am love And we We are one And we are one <laughs> Oh, you guys are too nice Oh, Ted, thank you so much. We did have a question if you have an album. So do you want to say anything about where people can get your music? Well, I've been working on a project. I've got a lot of music, you know, and it doesn't have a place, you know, in the mainstream. And uh, but I, I like these songs here. I still think there's people out there that want to hear them. And um so I am actually getting together and setting up my own publishing company. And um, I meet with the lawyers this next week. And um, I'll be cataloging it. And I'm not going to make it real fancy and go through the studio and spend thousands and thousands of dollars because most of the stuff that I will assemble, I will, I will just let people have it. And they can tithe if they want, whatever, you know. Uh, Thank you for asking. Uh, I've been writing a long time, uh, 40 plus years, and uh, it's all just stacked on a shelf. I, even though I'm, a, I'm in a professional songwriting group based out of Nashville, I do songwriting workshops I have for 25 plus years. Um, there's nothing that attracts me to being in the music business uh, for secular music. You know, I do my bereavement. I do some history songs. I wrote a song for the Detroit Tigers once and uh, stuff like that. So, but thank you for the encouragement, everyone. God bless you. Thank you. Great, Ted. Could I put your email address in the chat in case people want to? Yes. In fact, if anyone, I have a bereavement CD uh, that I, uh, I will gladly share. And it's Ted Swartz with no space. Uh, at gmail.com um, and if you put in the subject Sparrow I will uh, that is, is a studio CD that I did for a, a conference I did in Miami in 2003 um, but the songs still are as pertinent today because the understanding of life and death has not changed since 2003 so the songs are pertinent <laughs> Well, that was that, that almost didn't come off very well, but I love you guys. We love thanks, you, Ted. Thank you so much. Thanks for letting me share. Oh, it's heavenly, really. It's like heavenly. Um, okay, well, Lisa, you can take us home with prayer. I will uh, just thank everyone for being here. Thank you for your beautiful energy. And so here we go, Lisa. Thank you, Angela. Um, yeah, we're so grateful for this opportunity to join together for the Sundays of Spirit. We're grateful to Kieran J. Gardner for sharing the message of true forgiveness and reminding us that forgiveness is a way to happiness and peace. And there isn't a substitute for forgiveness. 
We're grateful for Chad and his uplifting, beautiful music. Thank you for sharing your gift of music with us. Grateful to Angela and her co-pilot Justine for running the Sundays in Spirit and infusing her uh, sweet energy into the service. Blessing all who will listen later and everyone who is here today. Remember you are one with the one and with each other. We share the benefits with all beings because we're the one with them. So it is. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.